This is a video I never thought I would actually have to make. I've been an engineer for over 40 years and I was an optical specialist for 16 of those years and I've been a systems and product development engineer for over 30 years and run some successful businesses developing technology products. That means that I've had to have a very good foundation in the reality of science and technology. Uh, I've always been very interested in science, or the way science developed, and so I tend to collect things along the way that uh, I use to increase um, my knowledge um, and that further enhances my interest. We'll come back to the banana in a few minutes. But one of the things I've picked up along the way is a full set of these. These are the proceedings of the Royal Institution in London and it contains the entire text of every speech, presentation, the minutes of every meeting that have ever taken place at the Royal Institution. Uh, this set goes back to 1866 and the entire set takes up uh, an entire bookcase. There are literally hundreds of these volumes. Uh, each one spans uh, a few years. Um, but reading through these, it is very clear that uh, modern science was not an easy one thing. It came about uh, as a result of scientific experimentation. Uh, ideas came along, they were tried and tested, but only those which ultimately matched observations, aka reality, were retained while those that did not were discarded as they have no basis in the real world or even the universe. I was therefore astounded when a few months ago, while doing some research online, I came across the fact that some people believe that the Earth is flat. Initially I thought that they were just uh, poking fun at others, um, but the sheer magnitude of this idiotic idea caught my interest, so I spent some time watching quite a few videos presented by what I came to understand were called uh, Flat Earthers. The more I watched, the more amazed I was to learn that they weren't joking, they actually, they actually do believe that the Earth is flat. And of all the things I've encountered over the more than half a century I've been living on this globe, this is by far the most stupid thing I've ever heard. There is simply no excuse for anyone in today's information-rich world to believe in such a fallacy, and I can only attribute this type of thinking to either a total lack of education or simple stupidity, or maybe a combination of the two. A lot of Flat Earth believing individuals have made literally hundreds of videos in which they present absolutely no evidence whatsoever to back up their ideas, and they just dismiss the thousands of years of human learning and they replace it with their own lack of knowledge and ignorance. I'd not really intended to get drawn into this, um, but the idea that someone could believe in this in today's world uh, really did uh, catch my interest. And so I decided to look into it uh, more deeply, and the more I looked into it, the more I realised just how idiotic these people are. Now there's any number of examples I could have uh, selected to create a video in response to, but the one I decided to look at was uh, gravity. Uh, flat earthers uh, have to dismiss gravity as being non-existent simply because of the fact that if gravity does exist then a flat earth cannot exist. Um, simply because the gravitational forces would pull the flat Earth into a sphere. Obviously, if gravity doesn't exist, then flat Earthers must have some idea as to what uh, replaces it, and what causes objects to, uh, to fall towards the Earth, what causes objects to rise up through the atmosphere. And their favourite uh, idea is um, what they refer to as relative density and buoyancy. Now these things do exist, but they are not a replacement for gravity, and in fact, given any thought, the, they should realise that for relative density to exist, then gravity must also exist. 
The video I'm responding to here is one that was posted by a YouTuber called Phuket Word. So I'll put a link to his video in the description. I won't show any of his video here because I don't want to be accused of uh, cherry picking or taking his video out of context. And also you need to see it to really appreciate the, the depth of stupidity um, that it represents. Um, I will however reproduce his experiment here and this experiment is intended by this flat earther to disprove the existence of gravity. So what he did was take a set of scales and he placed an object on the scales and therefore he has disproved the existence of gravity. I think what they're actually getting at here is that the weight indicated on the scale is caused by the uh, relative density between the banana and the volume of air that this banana displaces in the atmosphere. In other words, if you were to take a, a banana made of air, the shape and size, and put it in the air uh, where we currently are, then the resultant downward force or upward buoyancy would be zero. But when you replace that with something that has more density, then because the relative density between the banana and the air it displaces is higher, then that is what is indicated on the scale. This is um, utter lunacy. It's uh, ridiculous. As I said, you do need gravity to create the density within the atmosphere, so the air we're talking about requires gravity to uh, have a, a density in the first place. What makes this even worse is it's very easy to create an experiment to disprove their theory, and it's one that's simple enough that even they could carry this out themselves. So if we look at the experiment, I'll get rid of the banana, uh, what you need for this experiment is a large syringe, a metal pin, and a plastic bung. So what we do to start with is weigh them all together. So we'll put them all onto the scale. And I will now take a note of the reading on the scale which as you can see is 51.76 grams. So according to flat earth theory, this 51.76 grams is caused by the difference in the density of this syringe, the plastic and the rubber bung, the plastic bung and the metal pin uh, relative to the amount of air that these objects displace. And you can work out what the actual volume of this syringe is if you want, it's uh, fairly easy, or if you want me to post that then let me know. Just bear in mind if you try and work it out that the syringe is actually full of air, even though the plunger's all the way in. It is currently full of air because um, air gets in behind the plunger, so behind the plunger um, the syringe is full of air, apart from the plastic parts that make up the handle. Okay, so what we have to do to start the experiment is to put the plastic bung firmly into the syringe. We now have to pull the syringe out and lock it in the fully out position using the metal pin. This is quite difficult to do, it takes quite a bit of force, so I might have to do this off camera but I'll give it a go on camera to start with. Okay, there we go. So what we've done here is we've still got the same amount of air in the syringe as we had to start with. So no more air could come in because we've got the bung uh, blocking the hole. No air can leave. And so we've got the same amount of air but spread into a, a greater volume. And obviously the plastic and metal parts are still exactly the same. So in other words, we have exactly the same um, material here as we started with. The only difference is we have increased its volume 
as far as the air it displaces in the atmosphere is concerned by a factor of four. So in other words it will now displace four times as much uh, air in the atmosphere as it did when the plunger was all the way in. So according to flat earth theory this should now weigh a quarter of what it did before because in theory it has um, four times the buoyancy. So if we get a calculator and we work out 51.76 divided by 4 we get 12.94. So according to flat earth theory this should now weigh 12.94 grams. Okay, so we'll take the assembly and we'll put it onto the scale and we'll look for our 12.94 grams. So as you can see we are nowhere near 12.94 grams. Just for completeness what I shall do is take out the bung, push the plunger all the way back in Put the three items back onto the scale just to prove that uh, we haven't uh, added anything or, or taken anything away. So I'll take out the bung, take out the pin, and as you can see we're pretty much back to the reading we had to start with. So in other words, reducing the density of this object by a factor of four makes virtually no difference in the weight that the scale shows. This totally goes against the flat earth theory that the weight is caused by the relative density of this object and the air that it displaces. In fact, it goes to prove that this flat earth idea is utter nonsense. Okay, so any comments would be welcome. Um, if you have any theories as to why you believe the Flat Earth um, conspiracists are correct, then please let me know. But, uh, I have my own theory about the validity of their ideas.